Good afternoon, I'm Nancy McDermott. This is my kitchen in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Welcome to Nancy's Table. It is a hot day, but I shouldn't even dare say that because I have my friends Elizabeth and Sean and um, uh, Elaine and other folks in the Sacramento and uh, Northern California in from inland from San Francisco and they're posting 108 and 110. I've got friends in Fresno. My friend Julie is in Fresno and 100. I think it's supposed to be 114 or 115 this weekend. Oh my gosh! Take good care. Stay inside. Drink lots of water. And I'm just praying for all the people who don't have the ability to do those things. So I will stop complaining immediately about how it's. The air conditioning doesn't quite take the complete edge off of it in here. Um, it's something else. So it seems like a good day for cold cucumber soup. You know, we have the phrase, cool as a cucumber. So cucumbers are just intrinsically cool. Watermelon, too. I mean, imagine what that meant to people in, you know, at four in the afternoon after a horribly hot day when you've been outside or you've been inside and it's... You know, it's not the same, but it's not nearly the relief of walking into aircon by any stretch. And to be able to bite into a cucumber or, um, or watermelon would be so incredibly refreshing and so sweet and so comforting in a way that I think we can hardly imagine. I think it's, I think it's hard for me to imagine what that would mean because I just have not lived those moments. So... Good time for cucumber soup, and it's no accident that I'm using Julia Child's uh, recipe as inspiration today because today is her birthday. She would have been, I believe, it's 108. Please tell me if I have that wrong. And I'm, you know, so not all my friends, but so many of my friends on uh, on Facebook and on Twitter are uh, food people. They love to cook. They're in the food business. They're chefs. They're writers. They're fans of Julia Child or they're baby boomers and they're fans of Julia Child. Um, so there's so many reasons to love her and because it's her birthday people are posting if they um, have a picture with her they're posting that and they're posting different uh, dishes that she cooked and that's why I you know as I was thinking this week I said okay what do I do Saturday and that occurred to me. I love this recipe it's the first cold soup that I ever had and I had it at a covered dish which is what in the south uh, what people call a potluck it's actually the proper name no I'm kidding I'm kidding in the south that is often called a covered dish because it's a dish and it's covered up and you carry it around and you carry it you carry it to your friend's place and uh, carry it to the family reunion carry it off to the homecoming to the dinner on the grounds to the um, tailgate party whatever it is so uh, this was a covered dish it was at uh, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill my alma mater and I had um, new friends in my senior year and they let's see one of them lived in the Lutheran Student Center which was a you know which is a it's, it's sort of like a church but it's an it's a near the campus ministry of different churches and faith communities there are you know all most faith communities have that near especially major college campuses and so someone brought this soup and I'd never had cold soup I'd never heard of it I didn't know it existed it would have sounded a little scary, but I love food so much and I'm intrigued and I'll try most anything once. Don't hold me to that. I'll try almost anything once, just in case you're going to come at me. Um, and I just remember loving it and thinking it was fantastic and wonderful. But I, at that time, I wasn't cooking. I mean, I was living in a dorm and I just thought, wow, how wonderful and didn't think about it again until years later when I was starting to cook. And I thought, well, how could I find that? And I actually bought... Uh, Julia Child's uh, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, Volumes 1 and 2, when I was in Taiwan on the way home from my Peace Corps service in Thailand. And they had a, um, a whole world of books, and they did not at that time observe international copyright rules. Um, I think the, in, in Asia, there's sort of a feeling, it's like, well, you can't own an idea. Um, and, of course, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, 
you know, in, in our country, you probably say, well, yes, you can, but then we'll go cheat and steal and take somebody else's patent and so forth. So it's complicated. But I, for some reason, bought those books and brought them home and looked it up and lo and behold, there it was. And it's just been one of my favorites ever since. And um, until I had a food processor, I thought of it as a lot more work, but uh, now I do have a food processor and of course you can do it in a blender. So it's great. So I made it ahead to show you. So here's the three-fourths of the way done version. And we'll, if you'll come and give me that and then you know, turn that over, I won't pour this out on the table. So this is, the soup is done. And now I'm going to um, cool it down. And then I'm going to, um, actually, I'm, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm going to blend it first. I'm going to blend it first in the food processor, process it in the food processor. And then I'm going to chill it down because I want to add sour cream to it and you don't want to do that at this point so I'm a little out of order I should have had this sitting here but I just made up my mind when I saw that happens a lot now instead of picking that whole thing up and pouring it I think I'm going to uh, pour that in there and transfer because that's going to be a little bit less precarious especially with all of y'all watching I mean, I've already dropped I've already dropped a four layer purple blackberry cake <laughs> onto a platter so I don't know what I think I'm hiding from you but anyway here we go so I've got almost all of it out now and I'm going to switch to this because now I know I can manage this even as heavy as the pot is and this is the last part so this is cucumbers oops I spilled shucks I just mind losing that soup but it'll be okay so I had about four and a half cups of cucumbers and I know I, I, the reason I say that this is adapted from is first of all I didn't I can't find my copy of the book is not handy so I can't look up right now her uh, Julia Child's actual recipe because you always want to you don't want to just say oh well they said that this was exactly the same if you're going to claim something you always want to get to the primary source just to be sure so um, so I found several uh, online versions and I'm because this is hot and I don't want to be splashed with it I'm looking for a really generous towel here we go so right here around the side is where stuff can come out so let's let's give it a try so I've got I've got it sealed up got it plugged in there's the power on and let me just drape it in case it's going to come squirting out and go to town Yeah, it's, it's spurting just a little bit. So, and you know, it's cucumbers and potato and, and shallots, all of which have been cooked for 20 minutes. So there's nothing that needs a really long buzz. So I think that may be enough. And of course, the better thing to do would be, would be to have done this in two batches because then it wouldn't have uh, overflowed. I don't know if you could see, it's come down the front and it's come down the side just a little bit. So nice to have that protection. Yep, this is fine. So I'm gonna transfer this now to my, because I wanna cool it down like I told you. I had some broth poured out already. Okay, set that there. And I'm going to pour the soup from the processor into this metal bowl. And, well, that's not good. Should have had that in there more firmly, but I can fish it out. And that's all right, and so now I've got my soup pureed. And it looks a little thin that's because we haven't quite finished yet now i'm going to put this over here in a water bath an ice bath and we'll let's see you can plug that for me thank you and i'm going to put my gigantic heavy motor and base of my processor out of the way i'm going to bring the soup over here and i had just ice cubes i didn't want them to uh, melt too soon so now I'm going to add a little more cold water because now I do want them to melt and I want them to receive the heat from this soup oh, okay so let me show you so here is my ice bath we're a little short on ice cubes because we had a shrub we had our blackberry shrub uh, at lunchtime which is a uh, sweet and sour blackberry blackberries vinegar and sugar cooked together um, into a syrup and then we put that in club soda and just had a nice little refreshing club soda, refreshing little homemade soda. 
around lunchtime. So, and this, this is the time of year where it's easy to run out of ice cubes, huh? Okay, so I'm stirring that up just to get it going. I'm just going to let that cool down a little bit more on its own. And let's come back and I'll show you how I got here. So this is my, I don't need anything from the food processor anymore until after you're gone. So I'm going to put this back on the stove. And first thing we need are cucumbers. So I've got four kinds. First of all, I've got the great big cucumber. I always want to call it a grocery store cucumber, a commercial cucumber. Supermarket cucumber is probably pretty good. So it has been bred to be large and it has been bred to be sturdy. So the skin is very thick. They used to be waxed. They're not waxed anymore. Um, but the peeling is thick and not delicious. So sometimes, you know, sometimes I do leave it on just because I want a little tiny bit of color and it certainly won't hurt you. So sometimes I might do, well, it's hard to see, it's hard to see, hard to see looking straight down, but sometimes I might do it because I want a little bit of color on the side. I might leave a little bit on. Um, but in this case, since I want cucumber more than anything else and I don't, and I'm, you know, I'm going to blend it, but still, for this kind of cucumber, I am going to peel it. I was a little careless. That's all right. Then, after I peel it, I'm going to cut it in half lengthwise. Move that out of the way. And then, thank you, President Obama, I'm going to take a spoon and just go right down the middle. I should do that. Let's see. I'm going to take a spoon and cut right down the middle and make a cucumber facial. I should save all that and use it, shouldn't I? So that's, I've scooped out a little boat for cooking. That would be something you could serve something in. This one I am going to do toward me, just pushing on those seeds. And now I've got all these refreshing cucumber seeds. It's not the end of the world if you put them in, but you don't really need them. So I get rid of those. So that's my great big supermarket cucumber. And for this recipe, I want everything to be about a half an inch. So I'm stacking up and chopping. It's coarse. It's fine. You know, that's sort of a general thing. For a half inch, for most things, I'll do quarter it lengthwise and then cut it crosswise. I think I'm going to switch to my cleaver for this because I've got right much a lot of them. And of course, there's, you know, there's no, there's no resistance in cutting a cucumber. I could certainly do it with a one of these. But since I've got this, and of course, one reason to get a cleaver, Chinese style cleaver, is because then you can use it to carry things around the kitchen. I can, you know, I could easily chop all this and walk over to the stove and not have to transfer it to anything else. So we're getting there. I want four, about four and a half cups chopped up. That's around two pounds. Always get too much. You never know if you're going to get a little surprise inside. Maybe it's Maybe it looks fresh and good on the outside, but it's not fresh and good on the inside. I wasn't going to get this, but I wanted to show it to you. It's, so these are called English cucumbers. They're also called um, hothouse cucumbers. They're huge, and they're sweet, and they're pretty inside, but I don't love that they're coated in plastic. So if I can buy something that's not coated in plastic, like the big old, you know, the one that I had to peel, that's nice. This does have not only... So, and so usually the, this is the size that you're going to find. So this, it's about two inches across. And, you know, this time of year, it does come up to that part that maybe is not going to be beautiful. Let's see how it is at this end. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit tough, but if you sliced it thinly, you could still use it. So I thought, I thought that from there on was not good. It's fine. This one you could peel or not. I usually don't peel these because I think the <coughs> skin is... Well, they're all edible. I don't mind eating it, and I think it's really beautiful. So I'm going to leave this one as it is, except for this part down here, which is the end part, which I know, I happen to know, is a little bit harder, tougher, thicker. And I'm thinking, well, what if the skin is too? So I'm just going to take, peel it off, pulling it toward me, and very awkwardly here. Ooh, this would definitely be one to do with a different kind of peeler. So I'm going to chop that part up. And in it goes. These are very coarse. And then this one, I don't need to cut it because I'm not going to take out the seeds. The only one, in my opinion, that needs to be seeded is that first one, which is the, the great big grocery store kind. This one, look inside. You can see the seeds. 
but they're no problem. They're, they're beautiful. And it, look at the beautiful green color that it has compared to others. It's really a treat and a sight to see. So again, these are a little bit bigger than half an inch, but that's all right. All right, cucumbers in. I told you I needed about four and a half cup. I've got one more. I'm gonna go ahead and say hello. We've already got two pages worth and look at me. Oh, and I've got two more cucumbers to cover. Fortunately, all it does is boil and get stirred together. So you're not, you're not missing a whole lot. Athena, welcome. I hope you are cool as a cucumber. I hope you are taking good care. Nancy, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. You too, everybody stay cool. And I need something to drink. Well, when you get a chance, just give me a little glass of water. No rush, Miss Gail, how are you? <gasps> how is it in Azusa? Oh my gosh, I bet it's hot there too. Y'all, this is the South. We knew it was hot and humid here. When I lived in Southern California, we bought a house, a nice single family, three bedroom, two and a half bath house in a tract. And it did not have air conditioning. It had a nice yard. It had a, it had a fenced in backyard. It had a garage. It had a tiny lawn. Yay. It even had fruit trees, but it didn't have air conditioning. And I sort of thought, we're going to pay this much money. We don't have air conditioning. People said, you don't need it. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's hot. It's a little bit hot for three weeks in August. <laughs> and that was in 1989. And it was true then. I never missed it. I never whined or complained. I never, you know, it's a dry heat, <laughs> whatever they say. But as we know, things are changing now. And uh, air conditioning is a huge luxury and an incredible it's a strain on the climate. Oh my gosh. It's all hard. But I do, I remember with great joy living there and um, I'm just thinking with love about everybody who's out there and stay cool because it's not easy. Miss Stern is making the cantaloupe soup. Oh, I'm so glad. And my friend Nancy Stern posted a picture today on Facebook of her with Julia Child and she attended an event for the IACP, the International Association of Culinary professionals of which I am a member and as after Julia retired and moved to California and was you know enjoying life but not cooking the way she did um, you know back in the days um, Nancy bought her knives how wonderful and it was so wonderful to see a picture of her signing something for Nancy at that event and that's what a blessing what what a gift I'm so glad that they went to someone who appreciates and someone who loves them to this day and will pass them on that's so wonderful Sherwood, welcome. Hey to Eddie. I hope y'all are doing okay. Staying cool. Betty Ann, welcome. Happy birthday, Julia Child. I bet my friend Betty Ann is, you know, we're all on that team. Uh, Athena, my grandmother would put a peel of cucumber on her forehead and it would cool her down. It does. That's amazing. It is physically, it is cool to my touch. It's just lying here on my counter. That is amazing. So cool as a cucumber is not a story. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Athena, thank you for telling me that. Catherine, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're chilled. Slice cucumbers on your eyes to bring down puffiness. I, and I think it would also just bring down my anxiety. <laughs> So I'm using every cucumber in the house today to make two batches of this stuff, but I'm going to buy some more and I know what I'm going to do with them. My eyes, my forehead, I'm going to peel great big thick sections. Y'all, thank you. Oh, this is, this is old knowledge, isn't it? Sue, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. What did I promise to send you? I know that I, I have your address written on a piece of paper and that means I promised to send you something and you need to help me remember because... I started to look it up the other day. So please let me know. Don't be ashamed to say, you told me you would send me X. Dan, welcome. How are y'all? I hope it's cool enough. Got those young kids and I just hope everybody's staying as cool as possible and getting through it. Gail, welcome. And I know that my cousin Gail is uh, just busy harvesting the best tomatoes and peppers and all kinds of good things uh, from their yard, not too far away from here and two dogs you know i've got friends who've got dogs and sometimes our dogs head on home ahead of us and where they're waiting for us at the rainbow bridge uh but gail and Jean got a new dog that's a, just a darling looks like a miniature of the bigger dog and i've just been seeing pictures they were they started to like 
get together and then they took a nap together and now they're playing around together and it's like whew, how wonderful betty ann my chinese cleaver is my go-to tool for all kinds of cooking absolutely me too and let's see we've got chris chris how are you i'm just so glad that you're here mabel no ac on the san francisco bay same thing you didn't used to need it and so it's you know as soon as it was invented it became very popular in the american south but it's only in the last few years that climate change has brought surprises to other places. So my heart is out to you, and I hope you got some breezes. We, this year, we've been running fans along with the air conditioning, just because that helps make it better. Um, and Steph, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And Lydia, I, it's just such an honor and a pleasure to be with all of you, and I hope you're staying as cool as possible. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sue. Okay, good. All right. Okay, two more, two more cucumbers. So this one is Kirby, K-A-R-B-Y. It's got the little bumpy bumps on it. It's short and fat. And sometimes they're called curvy, C-U-R-V-Y, and that's because not this one. I didn't keep the right specimen. But this is if you have a garden in North Carolina and you grow cucumbers, you're going to get short, squat, fat little cucumbers that have seeds but not, the, not a bad kind, seeds that you can absolutely eat. But they're a different texture than these other cucumbers that I've showed you. And oftentimes they're curvy. They just, you know, they're they're like they're more like the letter C. So that is a kind that I love to buy. And of course, if you go to the farmer's market, that's what you'll find. And if you go to the supermarket, you will find these. Usually, usually at the supermarket this time of year, you'll have both the great big torpedoes, which you definitely want to peel and take the seeds out, and you'll have these curvy or curvy cucumbers, which I usually peel. If I'm doing something, you know, like a soup, or I want something to be a little more on the delicate side, again, I might peel them partially and leave a little bit of green for beauty. I do like the color, but for those, they tend to be a little bit bumpy, and I think the, the peel is a little bit thick. I cut these in half, and you see they do have seeds, but that's not bad. That's a wonderful seed. You can absolutely eat those. So I would never discard the seeds on little teeny fresh cucumbers. These are also called pickling cucumbers. So if you have, you know, that's, a bit, that's about the size. Well, if it weren't cut up, if it were still round, I'm, you know, I have to, I'm doing a Rubik's Cube now. But if you are making um, dill pickles, sour pickles, sweet pickles, any of those. And this is the kind of cucumber that I would find in Thailand. It's called Thangwa. Thangwa. Thang is anything that is in the melon family, and gua is just the name of this particular sweet, wonderful one. And this brings me to the last one, and I found this from, let's see, the recipe for the gazpacho. So I'm doing two cold soups in a row because it's hot. Uh, the gazpacho recipe called for a Persian cucumber, and I said, what's that? So, and I always thought that Persian and English cucumbers were two different names for the same thing, just like hothouse and English are two names for the same thing, but not the case. A Persian cucumber is this, and it is, it's like a mini hothouse cucumber, except it's not, well, it is, so, actually, it is sold in a package. So this one was in, uh, it was on a plastic tray, I'm sorry to say, um, and sometimes it'll be on that, on the black foam kind of tray. And so it's like, kind of like that hothouse one, but miniature. The, the peel is very tender, so I, for this one, I leave the peel on. You know, it's, it's just personal preference. Take them all off. I would definitely take it off on the um, on the uh, grocery store one. I'd take the seeds out just always, just as a matter of case. But check it and see how you feel about it. And so this one, and for this one, I am going to save, as the recipe directs, I'm just going to save a couple of very thin, super thin, even slices of cucumber for garni. Put that right there, put that right there, and those are so pretty. Okay, so I've got my cucumbers, and I'll do this last one in, and what am I doing? Of course, we want the cleaver. Making that sound, the sound of good cooking. Okay, and let me quickly, let's get this up here. Okay. All right, so I've got my cukes ready. Shallots go in. Now, some I've seen recipes that call for leeks, but I'm, I believe that Julia Child used shallots in the original. I don't know that, but I did see signs for both. So this is a shallot. These are all shallots. 
in America, we want them, they're too big. I would like them to be um, more like this. In Thailand, they're very pink and purple inside. Whoop. And they're about, oh, there we go. So this is, this is a size that I would expect to find a traditional shallot in Asia or in France, you know, so that it's, it's much smaller than a, it's more, it's like a giant clove of garlic. It's much smaller than any white or yellow onion that you would see. So you, so I already cut into that one. So this one, I would cut this one, I cut off the top, the, the growing sprouting part. And then I'd see, see, I can't get that off yet. I like to, just to peel them, I like to cut them in half lengthwise and see how easily I can just get that red papery outside off. Shallots are so delicious. French people use them all the time. It's like the basic onion. I think that, I think that we American cooks don't like them because they're harder, you know, they're a little bit more fussy. You gotta peel a lot of them. An onion, you just cut it in half, take the peel off. So I think we're sort of like, ah, they're all the same, and we just prefer onions. But shallots give so much flavor. In Thailand, they are essential. Shallots and garlic anchor almost every dish. I know that I've said this before. When I went back to Thailand in 1989 researching my first cookbook, Real Thai, I would say, so how do you make, okay, so tell me about this, okay, this very special curry, this wonderful stir fry, this homey um, nam prik, uh, chili sauce, this, and people say, hom gratin, blah, 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 blah. they just look away and go, well, you get your red onions, you got your red onions and your garlic, and then you whatever. And they wouldn't even say what to do with them because, you know, like my grandmother, well, you know, you, you just, you just, ma you make your cake and then you make the, you know, they'll tell you about the hard part, which might be a chocolate icing instead of an egg white icing instead of a caramel icing. But it's like, first you, just, first you make your cake. <laughs> and you are presumed to know. So I'm cutting this lengthwise, but I'm leaving it attached. And then I'm coming in with the smaller knife crosswise. And then when I cut crosswise, I get pretty small tidbits. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter because of course we are using, and everything that I'm tossing away here, I will use. So please don't worry, even if I'm being very careless now. So this is a half cup of shallots that's now all chopped up pretty and purple. I love the purple color. A lot of times people use uh, in, in, the, in the West and like even in Thai restaurants, they'll use purple onion, red onion, because it is, it's always gonna be bright purple. Here's shallots sometimes, these are very pink and purple. I don't know if that's a summer thing, but sometimes they're barely colorful at all. Sometimes you could hardly tell that they are shallots and not onions. So um, you, you do see that and that's a, that's a good substitute. It, it's fine, it's fine. Um, so this one, I just wanted to show you. So if you've got onions and shallots and garlic, and they are this time of year, they want to grow. They want to be free. They want to make a family. Here are, here is a little, fat little shallot that had a, a cowlick, had a topper there. And so I cut it in half length. You could just, you could just put it in the compost, but if it's the last one, you need to make use of it. You can just come in. This is going to be bitter and not delicious, this part that has decided to devote itself to the next generation. So I just go in and I get under that green part and lift it out. And you know what? I'm, I could probably save a little bit more of that, but, and that is the green part. It's gone. And I'm going to go now to the top and take away that tip. And then I've got two, now I've got, you know, these sections, these are all fine. So I can chop that up. Same thing with the other one. You see, I'm gonna go in with my sharp knife, just get right under the green. Oop, this one, it goes pretty deeply. This one actually goes to a whole other section. Sometimes you go in and there's, there's like a whole other little onion going on. So this one needs a lot of opening up to get to all those green bits. That green, that green bit right there just does not want to leave, but I'm, I found you. This one is, this is, it's not your turn. Okay, that was too much work. So that, I'd say, okay, that one was too embedded. There's just not gonna be enough left that's gonna be good. So, but on this one, it's great and we're putting it in the soup. Okay, we've got our cucumbers, some peeled, some not, big seeds taken out. We've got our shallots, half a cup, chopped up, ready to go. That's wrong. These get cooked in the butter first. That's why we're using the wonderful shallots. So I found a recipe that said leeks. 
It said that Julia Child used shallots, but they like leeks, so they use leeks. So that's why I'm saying I haven't confirmed that with looking in her actual book, but I think in this case that shallots were the original one. But leeks are great. Leeks are going to need a little more cooking time. Like shallots, they give so much flavor, and like shallots, they are unappreciated, underappreciated uh, in the U.S. You just don't see recipes calling for them. People don't necessarily first time know what to do with them. So let's give leeks a chance. So this is what's left of a potato. Now, here's where I diverge from the recipe. The recipe calls for, uh, is it four tablespoons? It calls for cream of wheat or farina, which is a, it's a, it's a wheat grain, which is ground up to make a breakfast cereal very bland. My father loved farina. He was Irish. He grew up uh, Irish immigrants in New York City. He lived on um, uh, West 53rd Street and his mother cooked farina. And so the first time that he came to our home after we moved in and we have the, we got countertops. This, this is the, this is the inexpensive version of, I think the fancy one was Cornerstone. So there were these cornerstone countertops, which were not granite, but they were fancy. And then somebody came up with a cheaper version of them with another name. And that's what we got. <laughs> so, um, and this is the design. So all the counters here are this. And I liked it. I think it's great. And I was just so delighted and amazed at how memory works because my, my father came in right, standing right over there and he... He leaned down, there was nothing on this counter, and he leaned down and he looked at it and he said, cream of wheat. It reminded him of cream of wheat, and you know, if you've ever had it, you'll know he was right. He was almost always right. Am I right? Will's chuckling, yes. Okay, so, as one of the people in the recipe said, I hate to go to the grocery store and buy, pay $2.49 for a box of instant breakfast cereal that is very bland that we will probably never use, it will probably go bad. Even if I made this four times this summer, it only I think it called for two tablespoons. So I thought she is using that as a thickening agent. And so, and actually one of these folks said, substitute uncooked quinoa. That doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Or rice, that's for, that's for gluten-free. So if you're gluten-free, you're not gonna use the cream of wheat anyway. Um, uncooked quinoa or rice, it seems to me that if it is a breakfast cereal, it's not going to need to cook for all that long. And I would use cooked quinoa. I would use cooked rice. I think I think a half quarter cup, half cup of cooked rice would be wonderful. I would just use something to give it substance that is not flavored. And I decided that I'm going to use potato because so many creamy soups have potato in them and that's part of the creaminess and especially nowadays you know an old recipe would say oh put in two cups of heavy cream and that seems like a lot even for me who loves heavy cream so I'm often using potatoes to thicken up and give a little body so I decided that for this recipe we would use a half cup of is that my, here, we go. here we go a half cup of potatoes I put them in water just so they didn't darken and get tired because I did this several hours ago. Sometimes I don't bother with that, but I decided today that I would. So that's going to go in with, so that's my substitute for the farina. I'll put both of them in the recipe um, if you'd like to be absolutely true to what Miss Child used. And I just was going to show, this happened to be part of a baked potato. I used half of it here and half of it here, but you could also use like half of a red potato. So I'd say you need about that much, maybe a little bit more for that thickening job. And then we also need, so the recipe starts with three tablespoons of butter. You melt it, you put in the shallots, cook it till it smells good. And then we're going to add chicken stock and um, vinegar, salt, pepper, all those things. Let's actually get that started. Yeah, so I'm, I'm keeping my same pot because it has all the right flavors in it. And why wash it twice when you could wash it once? I heard thunder. Yeah, storm's coming up out here. All of a sudden, it's soup weather. This is cold. This can be cold soup weather. I'm going to put this on, and when I hear it bubbling, we'll add the shallots. 
and just move this through its paces and leave it cooking. You'll get to see everything. Okay, so there, I'm gonna brown the I'm gonna cook the shallots, not brown them. You're gonna cook them for just a few minutes so they smell good and are tender, but are not browned. Then you're gonna add the cucumbers and the potatoes or the farina if you're using that. I've got a teaspoon, it said salt and pepper to taste. So I'm using a teaspoon of salt to start with and it's probably about a quarter to a half teaspoon of pepper. I like pepper. That's gonna go in and a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. I would feel perfectly happy to use apple cider vinegar. That's just me, but if but uh, Julie Child said it's up to you. And I also have tarragon. So she says a cup of minced fresh dill, tarragon, or parsley. Another version says a half cup chopped dill. And another version says a cup minced fresh herbs like dill, tarragon, or parsley. So I went with tarragon because it's the most unusual. I very seldom use it. Dill is perfect. When I make this, I usually use parsley and dill together, but I did decide to get the tarragon today. Maybe you've not seen it. Um, this is a little bit puny. Tarragon is the only herb that I never, that when I find it in supermarkets here, it's always in a container. It's always in the specialized form. I can find, whoa, oops, lift up the books, lift up the book, move that. Yeah, hold on people, hold on. I just spilled water over towards where these books are. Okay, now lift them up completely. All, all of them, yeah, that's right. Okay, that'll be good. Sorry about that, can you see me? Yes. Hello. Oh, okay. I watched pot. Okay, so I'll take, because I can hear it, I know things are happening, I'll take the shallots, put them in. The butter hasn't melted completely, but that's okay. And I'm going to turn it down just a little bit because I don't, I definitely don't want those to, to brown or burn. Hmm, brown butter could, nah, I don't think brown butter's the way to go here. Um, so the tarragon. So I see bunches of parsley, I see bunches of cilantro, I see bunches of, big bunches of dill, mint, basil, everything, even thyme. But we never, I never see a big bunch of tarragon. And I think that it's very fragile. I think that it goes bad so quickly and it's not as much called for, it's not as much known in uh, modern Southern cooking of the grocery store variety. So I think that's why it's just in a very specialized, has a plus, and you know, I'd much rather buy it like I buy parsley and cilantro and basil and so many things where you don't have to buy a plastic container if you want it. But I did that today because I think that that was the original Julia Child one. So I'm going to put a little bit, chopping it up at the last minute since it's one of the more delicate ones. And since I'm not straining this, I'm gonna take out that thick stem. So I'm just gonna put a couple of little tidbits of tarragon with that. So you put about half of the herbs in to cook with the cucumbers, and then the other half are going to go in fresh when you blend it up and when you serve it. So again, coarsely chopped. That's a lot of parsley. That's a nice amount of parsley. And I'm gonna save these little tarragon bits. Actually, those should go in too. I'm gonna save these little tarragon bits for garnish and I remember I've got my little tiny cucumbers for garnish too. Uh-oh, got a hustle. Okay, so that's going to go in in a minute with the um, with the vinegar, the salt, pepper. I think everything else is done. Let's talk about the chicken broth. So this is a cup and a quarter of very rich chicken stock. This is from one of my rotisserie chicken adventures and I put, we took a lot, uh, we had some of it hot just with a meal. And then we, I picked off, picked off most of it and made a chicken salad, small batch of chicken salad, there's only two of us. And then I put all the bones, meaty bones, I didn't pull everything off, meaty bones and skin and made this chicken stock and wowie, it's so wonderful. And that is much more rich than this needs to be. This actually, she actually says, and what's, what's on this that looks kind of yucky is tarragon from where I poured uh, the stock into there so that is it may not look wonderful but that's that's dirty but it's that's because it had the same thing in it so don't be alarmed um what did you so this just says four cups chicken stock this one says five cups chicken stock and this one which i think is the most traditional says six cups light stock so that's why i said you know 
that what I had there was like, I mean, it was almost like bullion, so rich. And so I'm gonna add a little bit more here to make this four cups. And then because that's so rich, I think I'm just gonna leave it with that and have two cups of water. Because chicken stock is gonna give it a really nice depth of flavor as long as you're not vegetarian or vegan. If you are vegetarian or vegan, of course, use vegetable stock. Um, you could even use water and then season it with soy sauce. Um, I actually was thinking that if this isn't enough, isn't chickeny enough and it seems thin, I'm probably gonna add a little shot of soy sauce. Um, so I'm gonna have these ready to go in along with the cucumbers. All of that is gonna happen. This is just water and at the very end, sour cream, but let's see how this did. So let's check our, so this has been, this is the hot cucumber soup that I took out and showed you in the pot. And now I have buzzed it up in the food processor and it's, it's a little bit thickened with the potatoes. It's not creamy because there's no cream of any kind in it. And yes, it's cool. It's, it's not ice cold, but it's cooled down so much. I'd say it's, well, I'd say it's something I better taste and that'll tell me the temperature too. Perfect, it's room temperature. I mean, it's not even warm. Incredible. This is magic. If you have to chill something out, get these, you know, these bowls, these nested bowls. That does it every time. Ice water and move it around 20, 25 minutes. You're going to be at room temperature. Okay, so now this is ready. I'm just going to put, let's see. She said you need a cup of sour cream, but she said to put a half cup of sour cream into the soup. Did I just splash this on myself? I think I did and then save a half a cup for garnishing the dishes. But you know, a lot of times we just serve it, and so I'm just saving a little tiny bit, plus I've got more, this is sour cream. And I was so glad when I decided I was gonna make this recipe, I said, oh my gosh, I've got sour cream that I need to use up. I forget, forget what I was making, a sour cream pound cake or something, but I keep looking at the refrigerator door saying, I need to use that. Ruffles. And I'm sorry? Ruffles. Ruff oh, <laughs> yes. We like Ruffles potato chips with Patty Page dip. That's the truth. That's why we have sour cream. And then recently I've been saying, this is really not part of <laughs> how I should be eating at this point. This is, you know, this is poor habits. So here we are using it in cucumber soup. Yay us. So I put that in. Will, can you check this out? See how quickly it's going from that sort of army green to a lovely and sort of vaguely herby, little bit green goodness. I love it. Now, I didn't really think about the salt the last time, and I'm glad I didn't because you want to put the sour cream in first. That is heavenly. It's so good. Okay, thank you, Will. That's great. So, now, the ideal thing we would do is put this in... Oh, how's my... This is going very slowly. I'm going to turn it up again. Um, let's see, sour cream, yes, I know what, I know I was coming over here for two things that I meant to get before we started. I've got my pitcher, and I'm going to get a big jar, there we go, okay, so, to have this, you make it, this is a lot, feel free to cut this recipe in half, I mean, this is, you know, six cups of chicken broth, and Two pounds of cucumbers, you could easily make a small batch of this. It would be ready in a jiffy. Um, and this holds four cups, so it will more than fill up this jar. So I would put, I would fill this jar with, is this four cups or three cups? Let's see. Two cups, three cups. Yeah, this is three cups to here. And it's probably pretty close to four to the top. So I can fill this jar, and then I can take another smaller jar, maybe about this size, and drop some off at my friend's house take some over to a neighbor, ring the doorbell and run away, leave a little note because social distancing. And, or if I know, we're, if I made it this morning, we're gonna use it tonight, I might just put it in the pitcher because then I can just easily pour some out all day long. The good thing about, and it doesn't need to be covered. I mean, it would be fine to leave, to me, it would be fine to leave it, you know, in the fridge, you know, for two days without covering it uh, because there's nothing in my fridge. You know, some, sometimes you have something sweet and you don't want it to smell like onions, but hey, this has onions in it. But the good thing about this is if you put three cups in here, before you serve it, you can do that cocktail 
that bartender move. Okay, can you hear it? I'm gonna put the cukes in and the potatoes, which now join the shallots, and I'm stirring it around. Can you hear it sizzle? So I've got the shallots, just cooked till they smell good and they're soft pink and they're releasing their aroma but not brown. Now I'm gonna put in my four cups of rich chicken stock and two more cups of water, that's six cups. And, and now your work is pretty much done. I'm gonna leave it at, I've got it up on like a medium high. I want it to come to a rolling boil and then I'm gonna turn it down and let it go for, oops, and let it go for 20 to 25 minutes. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in the salt, teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. You could use another vinegar, don't worry. And we're done. So that was it. Did I do everything? Yes, I did. So let's have a taste of this goodness. And actually, first let's get some beauty happening here because this is really a treasure. Oop, stepping way back. Now, hmm. So it's not beautiful anymore because I splashed. So the way to put this in a beautiful glass bowl to serve it would be to be at the table and just pour it very slowly and finish the last part. But you get the idea. Well, you can show. Here we go. Isn't that purdy? Yep. There we go. All right, so I'm going to set that right there. And who we got here? Grace and welcome. Glad you're here. And my friend Mabel, who is, I believe, in the Bay Area, says, used to be three hot days. Then there were five hot days. Now there are seven hot days. It's that are we're really hot. Climate change is real. Yes, indeed. John Kent, Ro, I'm sorry, John, Rona, and Julia. Julia, welcome. Julia's in England. Are y'all having a hot spell? I hope it's not too hot over there and that you've got green countryside and just lots of refreshing things to eat and but you're having a lovely summer. I'm so glad that you're here. Okay, so let's serve some of this up and then let you folks go. Be about your day. And let's see. This is, you know, this is those, the wonderful thing right now. If, if you're staying home and not gathering, this is a wonderful treat to have yourself. And it's re really easy to share with other people. Once we're back out and about and you're having a party well this is this a first course is this something that you're going to have in little shooter glasses for people to pick up as they walk around if you want it super cold just leave it in the fridge till the last minute it's perfect it's all i say cold it's also it's very nice at room temperature be lovely to take on a picnic and you wouldn't even have to keep it ice cold it's good warm i mean it, warm it's kind of like dishy swaths with cucumbers in it so it's the magic words this is good hot cold or at room temperature. So here is a little bowl. Thank you. And I'm going to see if we can put a little tarragon leaf on it. Can you hear the thunder? Oh my goodness. Goodness, goodness. And I'm, I put one tarragon leaf and I'm floating one, two, uh oh, one of the cucumbers. Oh, now that looks weird. Okay. I think I need three tarragon leaves. I didn't plan very well. And of course the tarragon could be chopped. That would be nice. Okay, people don't do what I did. I think that I'm just gonna go with some cucumbers in the middle and forget the tarragon. That would call for tweezers. So there's just a little bowl of, well, you're supposed to show the people. Oh, oh you're supposed to show the people, yes. I work so hard. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, now my hand is shaking. You can take. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Okay, so, and you probably need a spoon. Let me know if you think it needs salt. And I'm going to give myself a little bowl and tell you about my little quick Julia Child story, which is I used to go to, she belonged to, she was a founding member of the International Association of Culinary Professionals, which is still alive and well and is still helping our membership with as people have pivoted from teaching cooking classes at cooking schools or um, in their homes or in their, you know, places of business. 
Um, that's not possible right now, so people are doing it on Zoom, and they're doing it on Facebook Live, and they're doing it, you know, all kinds of ways. So now this organization is saying, I use this, I use that, try that, try the other. Here's how I handle money. It's just a very generous and um, wonderful professional organization, and uh, I think the spirit of Julia Child is very strong. And so as a young member in, gosh, February 1999, this is a month before we moved, so we moved to Southern California, and I started in 1989, and uh, in 1990, I had our first child and really didn't do anything much in the way of my cooking work. My, well, my, my first Thai cookbook came out in 92, but that was, you know, I'd finished it up right before um, our first daughter was born, and then it came out, and um, it was really, I think, about 1995 that I started back in. She's five years old. Uh, no, 1994. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so actually, I second child was born in 95. So, 89, had our first daughter, and got back to work, and was working, working, and going to event, going to, started teaching cooking classes, traveling all over Southern California, and uh, then our second daughter was born in 95, and during that time, our house had a, had three fruit trees. It had an orange tree, it had an apricot tree, and it had a fig tree. And uh, the peach tree was especially sweet to me because peaches are a symbol of longevity in Chinese culture. And so I a house that has a peach tree and I took our peaches the first year that were there. The apricot tree I think had one apricot during the 10 years that we lived in that house. I think I think maybe you have to have two of them or you need to get fertilizer or something. It's a beautiful tree, but you know, you really couldn't tell it was an apricot tree. And the orange tree had oranges. They weren't sweet, but we put sugar in them. We put honey in them. It was fine. But the peach tree gave us wonderful peaches and I made peach jam. And the second year that I did that, I, I canned it, I preserved it, and I mailed, um, cheekily mailed one to Julia Child and said, it's, you know, longevity and you're you've helped me so much and I wish you a long, happy life. And, you know, just put in the mail and I was like, oh my God, I'm so stupid, I can't believe I did that. And of course, maybe three weeks later, I got a lovely little tiny letter that said, thank you so much. It was very delicious. I enjoyed it on my breakfast toast. Sincerely, Julia Child. It meant so much to me. And then, and how did I have her address? Because she was a member of our organization and you could just open the catalog and there was Julia Child. 103 Irving Street, Cambridge, Massachusetts, telephone and fax. You could call her up. I didn't have the nerve to do that, but um, I could send her something. And then on February 17, 1999, she says, Nancy McDermott, Kai Posada, Carlsbad, California. Dear Nancy, thank you for your letter and the copy of the Curry book. I sent her my book. <laughs> Egotistical person. Congratulations. You must be pleased indeed, and I wish you great success with it. How gracious is that? Thanks, too, for the copy of your daughter's homework assignment. I am delighted to know that I have won such a marvelous prize, but wonder how all those scoops can possibly fit into one cone. All the best, and again, many thanks, Julia Child. Now, I don't remember this, but obviously my daughter did something where it involved an ice cream cone with lots of, you know, was it math? You know, she would have been... <laughs> well, this one. Oh, but this isn't the ice cream cone one, right? Really yeah. Just it is? Where are the ice cream scoops? <laughs> okay, my husband showed me. My husband is right. Okay, so this is vote. One question, who should be the best cookbook writer in the country? This was before the internet. You know, now everybody can do this. Nancy McDermott and Julia Child. And Nancy McDermott, my mom, and Julia Child who needed no introduction. Julia Child got 105. Mommy got 135. And the prize, but Julia Child won an 125 scoop ice cream cone. Congratulations, Mommy wins Strawberry Shortcake Supreme. So, <laughs> isn't this one? Oh my gosh. So I sent this to Julia Child since my daughter had referenced her. And that's why she said, I am glad I have won such a marvelous prize, but wonder how all those scoops can possibly fit on one cone. So, that's Julia Child. May I recommend that you read 
the book Deary, D-E-A-R-I-E. That's what she called people. And um, it's a it's a biography. It's really it's a big thick book. There are a lot of books about her, and, and they're all so wonderful. Um, but I really like that one. That's the most recent one that I read. I, th- I think it maybe came out probably eight or ten years ago. But it really goes into her deeply into her life, and uh, it's quite marvelous. And I'm I know that uh, she was she was a political person, and um, I would like to say that she would certainly be making toast to uh, the success of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, as I am. And I'm raising my cucumber soup to them. And I'm hoping that you are keeping cool with cucumber soup, with um, ice cream or ice water or whatever there is in the world. And Betty Ann, uh, did I drop, um, am I okay? Did you drop a cake or the cucumbers? Oh, I dropped, the, I dropped a cake. This was on uh, May 25th on Memorial Day in my big, my big taking a break till July 1st show. I <laughs> made a little uh, blackberry. I, I, I took a, a square single layer cake, cut it in half, and then cut each long strip in half to make four layers and ice it with black, blackberry icing. But I just had it sitting here, and so I tried to lift it up and move it to, I'm, I made a very bad decision. And so it tumbled onto a platter. So it was wonderful. So I made a trifle. What are you going to do? It turned out to be a much better lesson than the cake. Therese, how are you? I'm so glad that you're here. We need a phone call. I'm going to call you. Let's talk, okay? Next week, let's look for time. And Catherine, welcome. Yum, this is so good. This is easy street, people. If you don't have a food processor, use a blender. Just do it in two or three batches. And you can decide how smooth, super smooth and creamy you want. Um, I wouldn't strain it. But I like mine to have a little bit of texture, so I stop pretty quickly. Plus, I put too much in, so it was running out the sides. But, you know, feel free to do it the way that you want to. And I'm just going to taste it right here. The sour cream is divine. You could certainly use yogurt. And if, if you are vegan and you want that creaminess, there may be a vegan sour cream, a vegan version of sour cream or yogurt that gives tex- texture. You know, it's, it's really just... It does give a tangy richness, but you could do that. You could have lime juice and something else. It'll just give it the texture. So, such a treasure. Julia Child. Wonderful summary things. You are such a treasure. It's an honor to spend this day with you. Happy Saturday, August 15th. And I hope you've got something fun and wonderful with your own self or on a Zoom call or reading a great book or watching a fun movie. So I hope there's something that makes you laugh in the next couple of days. We've got, to, we've got to prioritize that. We've got to get those laughs in. So be thinking about the funny movies. I, for one, am going to get Chicken Run. We saw that 11 times when it came out. 11. We had two kids, and I liked it, so that's what happened. <laughs> okay, people, I love you. I will see you uh, at 5 o'clock for anti-racism check-in, if you are so inclined. And I'll see you at 7 o'clock over there for reading aloud. Chester, um... Not Chester. Chester is the cricket in, up in Connecticut, and this is Tucker's Countryside, where Tucker the Mouse and Harry Cat go up to help their friend deal with the challenge in the meadow. Things are getting wild. Bye now. <laughs>